In this video, we will learn to find the value of a trig function of an inverse trig function. All right, so we're talking about problems like these. All right, it says evaluate this expression, and we're supposed to assume that each angle is in quadrant one. That's important. So we're gonna find the value of the trig function of an inverse trig function. Remember that a inverse trig function is really just an angle. So it does make sense that all we're doing is we're finding the, um, the sine of this angle, whatever it is. Now we don't need to know what the angle is to find the sine of it. Um, but what we can do is draw a picture of it. So we're gonna wind up finding the sine of this mystery angle theta. And uh, to find out what this mystery angle looks like, let's draw a picture of it. So um, here we go. Here's a unit circle. All right, we know we're in the first quadrant. So we can go ahead and draw our angle into the first quadrant. Um, so this is the angle that we are talking about. Now we can go ahead and make a triangle out of this to help us visualize what we're dealing with. So this is one way to solve this problem. There's another way, um, but I think this is the way that will most often work for doing a trig function of an inverse trig function. Um, so here's the deal. First we have to deal with the uh, inverse cotangent being um, the inverse cotangent of one. So what we're saying here is um, if the if the inverse cotangent um, if we want to deal with the inverse cotangent of one and that's supposed to be theta, right? That means the cotangent of theta should equal one. That's what that means. Now um, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So you know how tangent um, is defined as the opposite leg of the triangle over the adjacent leg? Well, somehow or another, that means cotangent is going to be the adjacent leg over the opposite leg. Um, but all I see is the number one so go ahead and just think of it as one over one. So that means the adjacent leg is one and the opposite leg is one. Okay, um, which means I guess this is not technically the unit circle. So this is just some, some circle, not the unit circle. Um, doesn't matter, don't worry about it. Don't think about it too hard. Um, so adjacent to this angle is gonna be one and opposite will be one. So here's adjacent and here is opposite. Okay, um, so what will the hypotenuse here be? Well, um, we could solve this using the um, Pythagorean theorem if we needed to. All right, if this is the hypotenuse then a squared plus b squared equals c squared becomes one squared plus one squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So that's just one plus one is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Um, so that means two is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And once you take the square root of both sides, then you realize that the hypotenuse is radical two. All right, we may or may not need that value, but if you know um, both legs and the hypotenuse, then you can um, find the value of any trig function. Um, now, so now that we have a picture of the angle, we should be able to find the sine. So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So um, that's why if I wanna find the sine function, the sine of this angle is going to be one over radical two. Okay, so that's why that is the answer, one over radical two. Now I said there are other ways to do this particular problem, 
if you're very clever, you might have noticed early on that um, the only way that the cotangent was going to be 1 is if you had a 45 degree angle, you know, pi over, uh, pi over 4. And uh, so if you realize early on that it was going to have to be pi over 4, then it's just a matter of, okay, what's the sine of pi over 4 then? And of course, the sine of pi over 4 is one of the ones we memorized to be 1 over radical 2. All right, but you don't have to know the angle to do it, so that's why I did it this way. All right, let's look at the other bonus question. Okay, once again, they're giving us one that's a special angle, though, so um, maybe we should go ahead and just use the uh, shortcut this time if, if they're going to be this nice and make it this easy for us. Um, because this is an angle, right? So I'm asking myself, what angle has a cosine of radical 3 over 2? Well, um, that's pi over 6, right? We have memorized all these values and we have written them down um, on a sheet of uh, scratch paper and we're referring back to it now. So yeah, we know that the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. So, um, so we know that this angle right here must be pi over 6, all right, very easily. So that means um, right away we have the secant of pi over 6 is all we're doing. And uh, we know that the secant is the uh, reciprocal of the cosine function. So um, if we find the cosine of pi over 6, okay, which uh, interestingly enough, um, we already have happening right there. But if we have the cosine, um, the secant will just be the reciprocal. So w as we just saw, we know the cosine of pi over 6 is, in fact, radical 3 over 2. So that means the secant of pi over 6 is going to be 2 over radical 3. Okay, so um, that's probably the easiest way to do this particular problem. Please understand that arc cosine um, is the same thing as inverse cosine. So um, it's just another way of writing inverse cosine when they write arc cosine. Just for fun, let's redo this problem using the drawing a picture method. Okay, so um, again, we're in the first quadrant. We know this. We can make a triangle out of it. So this whole thing is some angle theta. All right, and that theta is right here. Um, you see we're dealing with cosine. You know that cosine is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So that's what's going on right there, adjacent hypotenuse. So um, that makes this radical 3, and that makes this 2. So if we find um, the other side, we could find anything that we wanted. So I could do the Pythagorean theorem. Now, um, I think it's going to turn out that we don't actually need um, the other side. Um, but in general, we would have to do the Pythagorean theorem and find this. Okay, I'm finding that OCD is compelling me to find this, even though I know we don't need it. So I apologize for the uh, extra time. Um, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. So it would be radical 3 squared plus Y squared is equal to 2 squared. That would make this 3 plus Y squared is equal to 4. Um, subtracting 3 from both sides, that would give me y squared is equal to 1. Taking the square root of both sides, that would give me y is equal to 1. So we do know that this would be a 1 right now. Um, but we need to find the secant. We know that the secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. So um, if I know that that cosine theta um, is going to be, you know, adjacent over hypotenuse, that radical 3 over 2, then the secant 
of theta should be the reciprocal of this. So that will be 2 over radical 3. So that is how you would solve it using the draw a picture method. Here endeth the lesson.